Hi everyone, Steph here, and this is the start of a reading vlog that I actually don't know how long this is going to take me to film. Definitely a couple of months, because I have decided to reread the Mary Gentry series by Laurel K. Hamilton, which is a series which, to be honest, I think of as my paranormal slash fantasy slash fae slash monster romance origin story. And uh, it should be pretty interesting because my memories of this series are, well, there are some certain standouts that I can recall with rather great detail, and then there are other things that I've totally forgotten. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the Mary Gentry series by Laurel K. Hamilton is a Why Choose Dark Fae paranormal fantasy-ish story. It was published in Mass Market. This is the first book, A Kiss of Shadows. I do actually have all of the Mass Markets for it, which I managed to get on a book sale. I think they were like $2 each, which prompted me to think that at some point I would like to do this video because I, ever, I actually only ever got about halfway through the series. There are nine books total. And the first time I read it, I'm pretty sure I got maybe book through books four or five. I might've got to book six. I, I genuinely can't remember this is pre booktube pre even booktube being a vague thought in my head i didn't know it existed and um yeah i thought why not go back to a series that is probably going to be highly problematic but is clearly the origin of some of my current day reading tastes so what do i remember about this series i remember that it is about mary gentry she happens to be related to the queen of the unseelie court and that she gets drawn into the political intrigue of this court. She, like, she's tried to escape, she spent most of her time in the human realm, she runs a private investigative firm, but she gets called back into the courts and is basically pitted, I think, against a cousin or a relative for the throne. And the first person to have a child or an heir will get the title. So already I'm like, <laughs> That's not problematic at all, is it? And along the way, she collects a group of men, many, many, many of them. Sorry, group of fae. Group of fae, they're not men, they're fae. There are many of them. I remember Frost, I remember Doyle. There's another one who is a member of the SLU who has tentacles. I remember he was just the most interesting because he was like the, the one that was definitely, well, I mean, they all were dark and broody and they all had, you know, issues. But, you know, there was something about that particular character and I, it's killing me that I can't remember his name, but you know, we'll, we'll see how we go with it. And yeah, it, however far I got into the series, Mary was still not pregnant, which given the amount of sex that I remember being in this series, I don't know how that happened. Anyway, I thought I'm going to reread the series and we're going to film a vlog for it as I go. Now, as it currently stands, I have managed to talk three people into at least reading the first book with me. Bless them. <laughs> for coming along on this bonkers journey. So uh, Heather knew that I was doing this and so she said she was happy to read the first book, potentially reading some more in the series depending on how we go because she remembered reading it as well and uh, being traumatized by it. And then Izzy and Megan also said that they would at least read the first one. So this first book I'm going to be reading in installments um, and trying to be good and not reading ahead because we're going to read it together. And yeah, as I go along, I will let you know <laughs> how we fare. So welcome to what may potentially be a truly problematic reading vlog. All right, so I read today's chapters and you know when you've read a book and you remember things about the book, but you don't remember them until you start reading them again. Yeah, that's a thing. So uh, the book opens with Mary working at the investigative agency that she works for. It's run by a member of the Fae and she is incognito. She is the missing she princess and she doesn't want anyone to know. So she's glamoured herself to look human and her boss basically calls her in to consult on a case that's come into their office. And it is a wife and her husband's mistress who have come in basically saying he's trying to kill them and there's some kind of ritual involved and so Mary goes undercover. Within the first two chapters you have discussions around rape and then in chapter five Mary herself is sexually assaulted on page and then in the next chapter the police detective is an arsehole <laughs> is the best way to put it but the one thing I will appreciate is that all of the characters call him out for victim blaming and I deeply appreciate that. I don't like that it was happening, but I like that they called him out on it. Sort of chapter seven is Mary and her lover, Roan, who is a Selkie, right? Who has lost his skin because Mary has been under a magic potion spell thing. They have an interaction and it results in him regaining his skin. And that's kind of where the, the 
section that I was reading today finishes off. So we haven't even hit the fair yet. And that is really interesting. The other thing that I forgot about this book is because I don't call them Faye. Well, they Faye is used, but they're referred to as the she. And that is how I have always referred to, like, that's my background knowledge in coming to the Faye. I use Faye because that's what everyone uses now. But in here, they're, they're called the she. I think back to all the fantasy romance books and a lot of the young adult fantasy that involves the Fae and like my friends you think you know Dark Fae you ain't seen nothing yet so this is gonna be interesting because the other thing I remember because we've got the Seely and the Unseely Courts of the Dark and the Light Court it's always the Seely Court that are the assholes we haven't even gotten to the story and I'm like oh hang on a second no I remember what happens they are totally the assholes. Yeah, that's where I am. I will update you tomorrow when I have read the next lot of pages. Hi everyone. So it is the next day. I've just read the next hundred-ish pages in A Kiss of Shadows. I totally forgot that Sholto was introduced earlier and that this also involved another truly disturbing fight sequence, particularly as Mary comes into her power. Like, if you know, you know, it's gross and disturbing. But so now we have met Sholto and we have met Doyle. So Sholto is the king of the slough. He is part she, part nightfire, which is why all the tentacles. Like there are bonkers things happening, but considering I'm this far into the book, like we're not in fairy yet. And you know, fairies in Illinois, or at least the Unseelie Court is in Illinois. I forgot about that. We're not, we're not there yet. They're still sorting out how to get Mary there. It's a wild ride guys. So my daily check-in for A Kiss of Shadows is, well my takeaway from this section is that Galen, who was one of the characters that I remembered, is the equivalent of Jake from Parking Around. He's the golden retriever of the group. He was always one of my favourites just because he was one of the Queen's guards but is basically Mary's best friend and is just total golden retriever, total sweetheart, does things that gets himself into trouble because he just wants to be with Mary. Anyway, we're not that far into it, but he was one of the guards that came to pick her up at the airport with Berinthus. We're a little bit over halfway, th well, yeah, a bit over halfway through. We've introduced a whole stack of the characters that I know will end up in this Why Choose Romance. And we've also had the first encounter with her cousin, the prince, who we hate. We hate him. He's not nice at all, but we still haven't got to the queen yet. And that's gonna be fun when we do. Hello everyone. So I can't remember whether I updated people when I read pages yesterday, but I've just finished rereading A Kiss of Shadows. And my first thought is, this is not as bonkers as I remembered, but I'm pretty sure that might be later books. So uh, watch this space. I'm also now thinking I'll probably do three reading vlogs where I read the first three books, the second three books, and then the final three books, just because I realize nine books will probably get quite long. And um, who knows, maybe I'll change my mind in a month's time. But this was interesting because we get the reveal that the Queen of the Unseelie Court is making Mary her, I can't remember what I've said in previous videos, but she's making Mary her co-heir alongside her son, her son who is trying to actively kill Mary because he doesn't want her to have any right to take the throne. And because she has been named heir, the queen has also allowed her guards, who she has forced to be celibate, unless they're with her, to be available to Mary. So Mary basically gets her pick of all of the men. And at this point in the story, she's only really been with Doyle and that was a total accident. And also Frost and Keto has been involved. The men that she has with her are Doyle, Galen, Reese, Frost, Keto, and now Nika. And I know Sholto will eventually be another one, and there is at least one other person who I have. Oh, Mistral is in a later book. Yeah, it's really interesting. And what I like about it is the Fae court politics, and the punishments, and the political maneuvering, and Mary has a very strong understanding of court politics because her father taught her well. And because she is mortal, she had to learn all of those rules in order to survive. And she spent most of her formative years fight, like quite literally fighting Jules, trying just to stay alive, which is why she left in the first place. I loved her confrontation with Griffin and then wanted to smack Griffin for his actions afterwards because releasing bedroom photos of your ex because she rejected you is just a shitty move but it's done so i will be starting the next book at some point i have to see who wants to keep reading and when they want to start um but this is a good reread choice i'm really enjoying it it's a lot of fun hi friends 
Uh, it is February the 13th, so we are, you know, approaching halfway through the month, and I'm finally picking up the next book in the Mary Gentry series. So this is A Crest of Twilight. It is book two. I'm excited to get into it. I've just read the first couple of pages and forgot that I was filming a vlog, <laughs> so I figured I'd better uh, quickly intro the fact that I'm reading it. It has been a day. So it's been nearly 37 degrees here in Melbourne today. Uh, we had horrendous winds. They were I don't know what they topped out at. I know in the west where the bushfires are raging currently that the winds have topped out somewhere around 100k an hour and at times it felt a little bit like that in the city. I know it was probably nowhere near that but it was pretty bad to the point where we actually had to have a hot day uh, at work so that meant no one went outside at all today and then of course at pickup we had a thunderstorm right as they left like it literally started bucketing down uh, I had to go from one building to another and as I was leaving the kids who were at aftercare turned around to me and said good luck <laughs> so it's been a lot and uh, yeah we are just going to take it easy we are going to read I'm gonna put the air conditioner back on because even though it's cool down outside this little box holds the heat like nobody's business even if I open the windows it just won't cool down because I'm not getting the breeze through here at the moment so air conditioner it is and uh, yeah I'm I'm excited. We're gonna we're gonna do this because I've I've been very slumpy the last couple of days. So I finished a caress of Twilight, and I, I mean it's it's been a while since I filmed the first clip, so I can't remember what I said in here. But here are my thoughts on rereads, and I'm gonna do a full video on this at some point. But rereads are really interesting, and I think they're like. I firmly believe that there is a huge amount of value in rereads and some people don't and that's totally fine like that everyone has their own preference right I have extraordinarily strong memories of reading the series like I I physic I remember physically reading the books I remember a lot of the beats of the series they're all in the wrong order and that's fine because it's been years since I picked up picked it up and that's why I think rereading is so important because I have such clear memories of reading the series I have such clear memories of very specific scenes and putting these things in order now again and, and to be honest I would have been too young when I first read these books not because of the content in it because that's the other interesting thing there yes there is a lot of sex on page and a lot of sensuality and, and things like that but this is not nearly as explicit at least in the first couple of books as I remember thinking it was again experience and how much romance and paranormal romance and things that I had read at that point this would have been you know very different from what I had read but in terms of what I read now there's nothing in here that I bat an eyelid at like there's a lot more violence in it and particularly in this book and I'll talk about it in a minute like I remember thinking wow what is this the thing that I'm reading and I don't think that now while I'm reading it and it's not a bad thing it's not a criticism of it at all I think everything that's happening in these books fits the story that it's telling in this one Mary and all of the Queen's guards who she has taken as part of her deal to try and get pregnant in order to become the heir to the Unseely throne they're now back in Los Angeles and at the start of the book they've gone back to work uh, for Meredith's previous boss which becomes complicated throughout the story and they're all you know they're, they're working towards her getting pregnant and there's a lot of the dynamics between the men and between Mary and finding her place I think the most interesting plot line in this story is Mary coming into her own as a leader and as a future queen and having to learn very quickly how to play the game and how to stand her own against other fae leaders and she does that she does it against her aunt her uncle who is the king of the silly court and I've just remembered something that comes up with him and it is it is not good that's in later books also you know the king of the goblins and the queen and one of the queens of the demi fay and she has to bargain and negotiate her way into a position of power with them because she's only half fay she's part human part fay and she is at a total disadvantage with everything that's going on so it's really really fascinating sort of seeing that arc and then also seeing her navigate the very different personalities of all of the men because you know they've had to be celibate for thousands of years because they could either be with the queen or not and she basically didn't sleep with any of them so seeing Mary work out their personalities also her recognizing and she she was doing this in the first book as well but recognizing truly who would and wouldn't make an appropriate king because whoever gets her pregnant becomes her king or her king consort you know th there's lots of different dy dynamics Doyle is the leader of the Queen's Guard so he is very politically savvy he knows the rules he knows the lay of the land he's strong he like automatic pick right and then you've got Frost who is just as old as Doyle and 
is someone that Mary realizes that she is falling in love with. But he doesn't necessarily play well with others in terms of group dynamics. And he's still trying to figure that part of himself out. You have Reese, who is far more modern, but is technically older than most of the other guard. And we learn a lot more about his story and about his powers and sort of why he lost them. And then sort of the consequences of the end of the book, how that impacts his powers moving forward. And he is struggling to deal with having a goblin or a half goblin in their mix because he was scarred by them. You know, he has to work through that. He is also the most sort of modern of all of the of all of the Queen's guards. And you know, th there's a great scene where he basically gets told he's being creepy around a mass massacre. So yes, there is content warnings in here for some pretty heavy, heavy things, but he was at one point a god of death. So like to him that it's it's nothing. Like he, he doesn't see that as weird because he's so used to being around it and he has a good relationship with death. But everyone else around him, particularly the humans, find it very, very weird. And, you know, he doesn't really understand what Meredith has to do in order to stay in her role and in a position of power. Same thing with Galen, who is her best friend, but would be an absolutely terrible king. Like, he, he doesn't know how to play the political landscape at all. Like, that's not his thing. He is a cuddly teddy bear who is just absolutely adores Meredith. Like, that's, that's their thing. And then on top of all of that, I mean, that, that's not the only characters, but they're sort of the, the main players. And then you have... A subplot with Maeve Reed who is an exiled fae. She's a royal fae who's been exiled from the Seely court because she knows the truth about the Seely king. Her plot line is also really interesting and I totally forgotten about her as a character and she she is important moving forward in the story. And then you know the sort of the little political intrigue plot that's woven through here which is you know these great magical creatures being released to try and cause havoc in Los Angeles and Mary doesn't know whether they're directed at her or if they're directed at Maeve and it's just like it's really interesting and yes okay there's many 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 descriptions of what people are wearing and what they look like and in part I can kind of like it would annoy me in other contexts but the Fae are very like the way people look is very important to the Fae and the way that people acknowledge someone's attractiveness or their faults or whatever is a very political kind of thing. And so like, that part's kind of interesting. So I, I mean, I could do with less of the clothing descriptions, but I kind of get where that's coming from. Would it hold up to contemporary standards? Like would it get published now? I mean, to be honest, it probably would. It would probably go through a few more edits and a few things, you know, are a little bit dated, but you know, as a, as a paranormal romance, I mean, I was thinking about this before. If this was not set on Earth, it would 100% be a fantasy romance. But the thing is, it's set on Earth, which puts it in urban fantasy romance category, which technically makes it a paranormal romance. But because it's fa like Fae to me are always more fantasy. So it's like it's sitting in that weird urban fantasy paranormal romance category that you kind of can't separate the two of them because we're missing some of the some of the things that you would normally expect in a paranormal romance. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm making sense. It's really late at night and I'm just like, this was a really good read. Like I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I desperately want to pick up the next book now, but I have to wait for a little while. I'm going to hate editing this clip because it's 10 minutes long, <laughs> but I read it and yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying this reread. Hi everyone. It is Sunday the 25th of February. I am, well, I've just started Seduced by Moonlight. I've also just finished another vlog. I'm wondering if you guys can spot where I start and finish vlogs because this vlog has been woven into and in the background of so many other vlogs. It's really funny for me how many bits and pieces and moving parts I've had going. But anyway, so this is book three in the Mary Gentry series. I am going to sort of at the end of this one wrap up this vlog and then we'll do a part two in another couple of months when I read the next three books. I'm not very far into it at all. I keep getting distracted. I've only just started chapter two and chapter one is essentially a whole lot of descriptions of Mary and the guards and the fact that you know, they've made a deal with the media that instead of being hounded by the media trying to take photos through their windows, they have pre-scheduled times where they can fly over the top of the property that they're staying on and there'll be some kind of show. <laughs> so uh, Doyle and Reese were involved in that, um, but there's a lot of descriptions of both of them. And now in chapter two, we've, we've just started another conversation. So it's a conversation that starts around sexual assault. In particular, the fact that Reese was at the mercy of the goblins at one point, and that's how he, why he's scarred and he, and he lost an eye. This conversation, it kind of leads into something that I'm, 
I, I haven't got far enough into it to know whether or not it's going in a concerning direction. Like, this is a why choose book, but it is very much them focused on Mary. It is not, I'm pretty sure no swords cross in this at all for memory, but it's been a while since I read it, but I'm pretty sure it's not. And some of the conversations in here are interesting because there's just been a, um, a comment made that the goblins tend to be more opportunistically bisexual than the she or the, the fae, the high court fae. Uh, and I think that's really interesting. I'm curious to see where that conversation goes because, or if it goes anywhere, because if it goes anywhere, then I feel like I'm gonna have an issue with it. But if it's just a throwaway line, it's a comment, like to me, that's a commentary on two, how two different races approach sexuality but i don't know we shall see okay so i just finished chapter two i thought i would just update my thoughts on that conversation that i was talking about earlier didn't really go anywhere because we came back to the fact that reese has an issue with the goblins and that mary has been raised with a deeper understanding of goblin culture than any other she and so you know she is very forthright in reminding reese and the other guards that what they don't know about the goblins means that they they're on an uneven playing field. The goblins will always be one up on them because the she are too arrogant to learn more about that culture and to figure out the best way to learn how to negotiate with them, which I think is really interesting. We know that Mary has been raised to be very politically savvy. She was never in line for the throne. Her father was never in line for the throne, but he was raised with a deep understanding and a, an awareness of how to rule. And that's how he's raised his daughter. And despite the fact that she has you know, human blood and is seen as lesser by most of the two courts. She actually has quite a bit of knowledge that most don't have, which I think makes her a really interesting character. Hi everyone, it's Monday night. I only got this far last night. I started to just get that tired, can't concentrate on what I'm reading feeling. I also, uh, not that this is, I'm gonna talk about this in this vlog, but I kind of just gave myself a bit of a, a brain break from this because even though they're easy to read and in very enjoyable books, sometimes I'm just not taking in <laughs> the information. So I just needed to read something completely different. So I started Everything Under the Moon, which is a young adult queer fairy tale reimagining, retelling sort of anthology uh, by Australian authors. I probably could have gone a little bit different because even the colors are giving me the, that same vibe, but no, this was just a completely different tone <laughs> to, uh, seduced by Moonlight. But I am going to start back up and hopefully finish it tonight. So I only have like 300 pages to go. All right, it's official. I am at the part of the series where I have lost track of how many people or guards Mary now has, you know, in her circle of guards. This was good. And I know that I'm coming up on something. I think it has to be in the next book. It's to do with her uncle in the Seely court. I mean, throughout the series, there is mentions of SA in various books for various characters, but I'm very, very certain that the next book has to be when she ends up at the Seely court because she's just gone back to the Unseely court. They've had all of the assassination attempts. The queen has had a spell put on her that caused her to go mad with bloodlust and you know she butchered all of the guards and then they've just had the big political intrigue stuff with the court with finding out who the traitors are and then there's been a big show of calling out those traitors and punishing them very violent very bloody very graphic but yeah like part of what i remember about this series one of the very vivid things that i remember is that when she goes back to the Seely court because the Seely court basically mm, rejected her as a child right and her uncle is a bit mad to put it mildly and i'm pretty sure there is an essay attempt on mary in the next book i thought it was going to be in here but i forget like these things these books really only have one major event that they lead up to i mean they're this big and there's lots of little things that happen along the way but the one big thing that happened in this one is obviously getting back to the unsealy court and acquiring uh, we're at least double the guards now. One thing I will say is that in this book there is finally a pronunciation guide for most of the characters, which is great. I do know that a couple of the pronunciations are not necessarily 100% accurate, like slew, uh, which in here is slua, but I'm, which to, uh, probably is accurate and then a different interpretation one that I've heard is slew. So who have we got on the, let's see if I can work this out. So the guards slash lovers that we start out with at the start of this book, Frost, Doll, Reese, Galen, Keto, uh, Nika, and Sage is technically there as a spy for the Demi-Fae. 
and then in this book we add Berinthus, we add Dare, Abloch, Uzna, Holly and Ash who are goblin slash she and there's two more oh my gosh who are they why can't I remember who the other two are anyway there's at least two more and I felt really bad for Caro because Caro did not get picked by the magic ring which I haven't talked about at all but essentially another side plot in here in this book is now that Mary is sort of gaining in power and is being blessed by various gods or goddesses and sort of their will is working through her in trying to bring magic back to the Fae. She's also acquiring all of these objects of magical power. So the Queen had given her this ring that is basically like the matchmaker ring. It, you know, if Mary touches someone it can call that person's person, other person, to them uh, and was at one point a sign of a happy marriage and children and things like that but it's been quiet for a long time particularly since the Fae have stopped having children and now that Mary's got it it kind of lets her know who is a potential suitor for her and then in this book it grows in power again and then she also acquires a magic chalice it helps her to bring all of the Fae into their they call it god's head but it's like like their god level powers so there's a lot that happens and this was not a neat, this was not a coherent description of it at all. There's a lot. I can say I'm thoroughly enjoying the reread and I am going to stop this vlog here and come back with part two when I read the next three books. I think I've read at least two, if not the next three, I think. But it's kind of hard to tell because I remember all of the big things that happened but I don't remember which books they happened in or the order that they happened in. So this is a very interesting rereading experiment in that sense because it has been literal years but it's fun and I'm enjoying it and I have dragged a few other people down the rabbit hole with me so that is always fun. Thank you for watching along as I'm reading an old paranormal romance series and if you are interested hopefully in the next couple of months I will have the next installment. Oh I think I need a nap. In the comments I would love to know if you have read Laurel K Hamilton before particularly the Mary Gentry series I have read one or two Anita Blake books I will not be going back to those those I think are far more problematic than these ones which is not to say that these books don't have problematic elements in them I am very interested in reading the next couple of books there's a couple of things in here that have been a little bit red flaggy but I'm not convinced that they stay like that and it's mostly to do with some talk around I think I said earlier about the talk around um, bisexuality and also queer characters. I'm just curious to see where that goes in future books but no, I mean nothing in here has been overtly terrible it's just I'm, I'm, I'm wondering I've got some wonderings about what might happen next. Stay tuned. If you just want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment feel free to leave a moon emoji down below otherwise I hope that wherever you're on the world just staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.